I've been a fan of science fiction since I was four years old. I saw this movie on TV, Invaders from Mars, from the early 1950s. The Martians, we've got to stop them. About these uh, aliens from another planet who came down and they sucked people underground in quicksand. And it scared me so much, I vowed that I was going to figure out a way of overcoming that fear. So to do Futurama now, after all these years as a grown-up, is very cathartic for me. What do you think of the view, Fry? It really puts things in perspective. I mean, from up here, an entire world can seem utterly insignificant. I took about three years to develop Futurama with David X. Cohen. And we poured over old science fiction magazines and went through archives. We sat around just talking about our favorite science fiction works and books and movies and uh, borrowing and stealing whatever we liked, <laughs> essentially. An episode of Star Trek and The Twilight Zone and The Prisoner and The Outer Limits. We've just mixed it all together and, and tried to do something that would both honor the science fiction that we loved and also, at long last, you know, make fun of the silliness and the absurdities of the science fiction that drove us crazy. Funny, isn't it? The human was impervious to our most powerful magnetic fields, yet in the end, he succumbed to a harmless, sharpened stick. What we tried to do on The Simpsons is put together a bunch of people who loved each other but drove each other completely crazy, a family. There's lots of adults on The Simpsons and there are lots of children. There's nobody in between. On Futurama, I wanted to explore the problems and the desires and the ambitions of young adults. Happy housewarming, Fry. It's a miniature fruit salad tree. Hmm. So we're dealing with a bunch of people who are working together, trying to make a life, trying to find love, <laughs> except we've set it in the future. All of them are outcasts in a way. Fry, our central character, is a young guy from New York City in our time who is a pizza delivery boy, not really going anywhere in life, and he gets frozen accidentally on New Year's of the year 2000. What the? <laughs> he wakes up a thousand years later, suddenly he's in this amazing, wonderful world beyond anything he had ever hoped to see in his life. Oh my God, it's the future. Anything we need to explain to the audience or to ourselves, we have Fry there, he's really stupid. So we can explain it all to him. That's his purpose. Good afternoon, sir. Then there's Leela, who's Fry's on-again, off-again love interest. What I wanted to do was create a, an attractive, sexy science fiction heroine, but I didn't want to make it too easy for me or for the boys in the audience. Mm. So I gave her one big eye. She's a cyclops. <laughs> and uh, so far, the fan mail for Leela is... Uh, is quite extensive. <laughs> Fry's in trouble, and he needs help. Now, I don't like you, and you don't like me. I like you. You do? Bender the robot is probably the most popular character on the show. Mm. He's been programmed to bend girders, mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to bend girders. He'd rather be a cook. Unfortunately, he has no taste buds. Listen, this is Bender's first meal, and he's a little sensitive. So let's be supportive, OK? All right. Yeah, OK. Oh, dear God! <laughs> Bender likes robot pornography, which is basically circuit diagrams, oh, but it turns Bender on. You're a bad girl, aren't you? He also must drink in order to stay sober. Um, it's kind of a science fiction concept. <laughs> it drives the censors crazy. Nah, I'm trying to watch my input. I need plenty of wholesome, nutritious alcohol. Futurama is designed to be an adult show. Kids like it, um, but the jokes and the stories and everything are aimed at a more mature audience. <laughs> there is stuff about sex and romance and, and uh, other things that kids are either uh, not interested in or too interested in, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> There's nudity on The Simpsons, but there are people you don't want to see naked. On Futurama, some of the people you actually do want to see naked. As long as I don't have to parallel park. <laughs> wow, if that doesn't get them to tune in, I don't know what will. This is where I brought my girlfriend on our very first date. The deal with most science fiction about the future is it's either a dystopia where everything is dark and dripping and, and leaky pipes and and it's all at night and very noirish, or it's very sunny and bland and boring like the Jetsons. 
So what we tried to do on Futurama is sort of jam them together. Radio City Mutant Hall. Cool. Uh, Crosstown Express? We didn't want the world to be too uh, goofy and happy, but at the same time, we didn't want it to be too grim. So in Futurama, you will find both sides of the technology, sort of like the world today. Ooh! Psst, tourist. The secret of all science fiction, it's not about the future. It's about right now, all of it. Just as I thought, the answer lies in this movie I found on the internet. New York City, the year 2000, the most wasteful society in the history of the galaxy. And it was running out of places to bury its never-ending output of garbage. We want to devote a lot of the effort in the show to actually what our characters are feeling and thinking and using the future a little more as the scenario in which all of these things are happening. As new employees, I'd like your opinion on our commercial. It's about anxiety. That's what the show is about. And that's what The Simpsons is about, too. It's, these are the things that we're worried about. You know, sex, death, love. Maybe I'm being too highfalutin here because science fiction is mostly an escape and mostly a distraction and mostly Futurama is that, too. But I like to think every so often we sneak something in there that uh, people might uh, think about. Space. It seems to go on and on forever.